And uh, today, uh, in, in this presentation, I would like to share with you how to scale uh, Shiny to thousands of users. Um, my name is uh, Damian Rajevic, and uh, I'm of the founders of Absilon. Uh, I'm also a technical person, so I work hands-on uh, on a lot of projects that we have. Uh, that's why I have uh, first-hand experience in scaling Shiny applications. Be sure to leave your questions. I'd be happy to discuss them, and you can contact me later if you have uh, any further questions to discuss. So. Let me start with a very simple success story that I keep seeing over and over again. And I'm really excited about this. Uh, thanks to Shiny, you and your team are able to build a successful app very quickly. Sometimes it is just a matter of days. And uh, you start having your first uh, uh, clients, customers, users. Uh, very often these are internal uh, users in your own company. You're helping them understand uh, better their process and go through the process much faster. And suddenly you have uh, more users that are using your application. Um, very often we see that uh, people who start using your Shiny application love it from the first day. Uh, because the fact is that thanks to Shiny, you are able to implement new features very fast. Uh, Shiny is super flexible. Uh, you just uh, make the changes on the go. Uh, everyone loves the application and uh, it does exactly what uh, people want to do because uh, this is a dedicated software that you build for them. Suddenly you realize that you have a huge amount of users that are using your application and there starts uh, to, uh, it starts to become a problem uh, because some would report to you that your application is actually slow or some will tell you that uh, they are blocked and they cannot uh, click around your application. And this is usually when uh, um, you decide to seek for the solution. And uh, these are usually the questions that uh, we are asked. Uh, how to make my app faster? How to scale my Shiny application? How to build a scalable, uh, shiny enterprise application. And um, one thing that I would like you to first think about is the fact that most of those questions usually start with uh, a question, how? Um, we are very used to trying to find the solution uh, as fast as possible. Um, we want to find good tips and tricks. We want to understand what's going on and just apply uh, new techniques. Mm, but there are two other questions that are uh, even more important that you should be asking. The first one is why, and the second one is what. Um, let me share with you a quick story. There was a client that had uh, their car broken down, and uh, they went to the mechanic. A mechanic looked at the car, and they realized that the engine is broken. They took the hammer and just smashed the engine. Uh, then suddenly the engine started working again, and the client asked, okay, that's awesome. How much do I pay for this simple service? And the mechanic says, you are going to pay $100. Um, the client wasn't happy about it, and they asked for the invoice uh, to see why exactly hitting a, an engine with a hammer actually costs a uh, hundred dollars. And uh, this is uh, the contents. These are the contents of the invoice: the one dollar for just hitting uh, an engine with the hammer, but the ninety-nine dollars is uh, because the mechanic understands why the engine is broken, understands what the root cause is, and then knows what exactly to do. Uh, to get rid of this uh, root cause. And now, um, before I jump into why, which I think is the most fundamental question that you should be asking, uh, let's talk about what, so that you have the whole context of uh, what uh, we usually do uh, when we want to scale the Shiny application. So when you think about sh scaling Shiny, there are two groups of actions that you can make. The first one is called vertical scaling, and this is increasing the amount of users for one machine. And uh, you can do it uh, in two ways. The first one is just adding more resources to your machine. So add more CPU, add more memory. The second uh, uh, way of uh, vertical scaling is making your Shiny application leaner, uh, so allowing more users to use it. Um, and the second group is uh, horizontal scaling, which is just adding more machines. Uh, to put it in this context, uh, first two are actually fairly simple. I know I'm very often asked about how to scale uh, Shiny horizontally, how to have multiple servers with Connect. Um, let me tell you this. This is actually very, very simple. Um, I'm going to share with you resources at the end of uh, this presentation so that you can take a look uh, yourself on the contents. Uh, but basically, the first uh, simple step uh, that uh, some people usually do is just ask the DevOps IT uh, if they can increase the size of the server. They add memory, they add CPU. And this right away gives you more users that can use your application. Of course, um, you have to pay for that. And very often uh, it is difficult to find additional budget for increasing the machine, especially if suddenly you need uh, you have 10 times as much users and uh, you need a really, really big machine then. 
Um, the second step that you can do is uh, talk to DevOps IT and ask for them to ask them to add more servers. Uh, this is um, as simple as just spinning up vir additional virtual machines if you are using cloud, or a little bit more complex if you are if you have like physical machines that you have to turn on and configure. But the good news is that RCD Connect is super easy uh, to configure. There are just simple steps that you need to uh, go through, and suddenly all of your machines are going to run RStudio Connect. All of them are going to uh, run your application. And the only thing uh, it costs you is actually uh, real money for the machines. Now, the third thing that you can do is uh, the most difficult one and uh, the one that re requires you to understand why uh, the application may be slow. And this is for you as an R or shiny engineer uh, to find the bottlenecks and uh, to understand uh, what slows the application down and to make the application leaner. Uh, there are three main things that you can do. Of course, there is uh, much more techniques that you can apply, uh, but uh, the key parts are first, to leverage the front end, to use JavaScript. As you saw from the previous presentations, it's not that complex and sometimes you don't even need to understand the JavaScript. If you don't uh, use server to generate HTML and send it back to you when you make changes, it already saves you uh, a very valuable time of uh, your processor. The second one is to extract computations, and this also decreases the CPU usage of your application. If your application is doing something heavily, think about a way to extract those computations somewhere else uh, to leverage uh, ability to use external services and not put all of the pressure on your Shiny application server. And the third one, which is, uh, I think, the most uh, commonly used, is to just use a database. Uh, I have uh, heard a huge amount of uh, success stories when someone just decided to move all of his data or her data uh, into the database, and suddenly the application was uh, easily scalable up to hundreds or thousands of users. Uh, this gives you two advantages, which is less memory usage and less CPU usage. So this is more or less what you need to do uh, to scale your Shiny application. Now. I would like you to fully understand uh, why we actually have to do this. Uh, because when you think about it, RC Connect is a great product that allows you to scale Shiny applications up to tens of thousands of users. Uh, you might have seen uh, Sean Loop's video where, where he shows uh, how this is possible. Um, and also Shiny is uh, very fast on your local machine when you just run it. And why should it be uh, slower for others when there is just uh, more people using it? So. Let me tell you a story based on a very simple application. Um, if you take a look at the code, and this is like a more most uh, simple one uh, that you can write. There is a slider and there is a text output. Uh, server, the only thing that the server does here is uh, the server gets the input slider value whenever it changes and sends the value back uh, as output text. Now, what happens behind the scenes when you uh, send such application to the server? First thing when the user connects to the server is uh, the browser is going to download HTML that is generated by your UI function, CSS, JavaScript, all the static files like images. And uh, at the same time, server is going to create a separate uh, process for you so that uh, you can uh, start your Shiny session there uh, and you can execute the R code. Now, the thing about processes is that uh, R is single threaded and uh, you can specify how many users you want to have for one process, but you need to realize that if there are two users um, that have the same process assigned and are single threaded, then when one pro process does something, then the other user cannot actually do anything. I will show you this uh, in a moment, but what you should understand uh, here is that the server creates a process or adds the user to an already existing process uh, to handle all of the operations on your reactive graph. Now, the second thing that happens is the browser creates a connection through WebSockets, and through WebSockets, uh, there are going to be data and uh, information being sent back and forth. Uh, WebSockets are slightly different than the typical REST API that you know, because uh, they allow you to have a bi-directional uh, communication, and that's why the server can actually push some messages to the browser, which is not that uh, the possible with uh, a simple, uh, typical applications that have REST API. So the, se the second step is the browser actually binds the Shiny inputs and outputs, and it starts the WebSocket connection with the server. Now, let's say that you are moving the slider and you set the slider to five. 
the browser is going to send this value to the server. The server is going to uh, check this value, trigger the reactive computation and return uh, the resulting value. So in our example, it is just going to respond to the browser that text is five. Now, uh, coming back to Pedro's presentation, if instead of just uh, returning a simple value, we returned an updated uh, um, widget, then you would actually have to send the whole HTML if you don't use the update uh, function that uh, Pedro was talking about. If you use update function, then the browser is smart. The browser receives only the data that has changed and in Java, on, Java, on the JavaScript part is going to update the HTML. So this is a huge value already by using the update functions. Now, when it comes to uh, the browser and the server, after the, uh, all of the computations are done, the browser is just waiting for another signals, either from the user or from the server. Now, this is a very simple example. Uh, now, let's take a look what happens when you actually start doing some uh, difficult computations. Instead of uh, just returning the value, I'm going to perform a long, complex CPU operation based on the input slider value. And now the same thing that happens, you send the value uh, through the web sockets to the server and within that process that is started for you, the uh, process is just calculating uh, the long running computation that you required uh, him to do. And the problem is that your user no longer is able to uh, make any actions within the application. Everything is gray, it is waiting for the output. And at the same time, new users or old users that uh, have already been using this process also cannot interact with the server and have to wait for this computation to finish. And this is one of the main issues that we see in applications when there is plenty of complex computations happening for one users, the other users are, are blocked or the CPU usage is so high that uh, the uh, other users are seeing that uh, things are going slower for them. So in order to get rid of this problem, you can use uh, multiple solutions. First one, extract some computations to the database. I will show you this in a moment. Second one, you can use Shiny Promises, which is a great package uh, by Joe Cheng that uh, create, uh, allows you to move those computations to a completely new process and uh, makes uh, Shiny free from any computation. You can use Shiny Worker, which is our package for similar computations. Or you can simply move uh, some of the uh, computations to the JavaScript to the front end. Now let's talk about the database. This is the second biggest problem that I see in applications. You might create a successful application that works locally fine, but in fact, the uh, application in order to run loads a lot of data into memory. And we need to realize that uh, our computers and uh, are similar to what we have as servers. They, they have their own RAM, they have their own CPU, and RAM usually is around 16, 32 gigabytes. It's not a lot. If in your application you read one gigabyte of data uh, and then you filter this data to do some actions in the application, let's see what happens uh, in the real life. You can see a machine here. Uh, you can see five users that are connected to our Studio Connect. And in this configuration, we create one process for every two users that uh, access our application. This is configurable. This is easy to configure. Uh, but uh, for this uh, purpose, uh, let's assume that we have two users per one. Uh, process. Right now, uh, if you have five users, you already have three gigabytes of data being loaded because every process is like a separate uh, uh, box that uh, contains everything that you need to uh, trigger all of the, to compute uh, everything. And now, when you have, for example, 13 users, suddenly you need to have seven processes and you use seven gigabytes. Let's see, if you have 26 users, it already uses up the 14 gigabytes of data. And when you think about it, 26 users is not a lot. So you should be very aware of the fact that uh, the usage of your memory is going to multiply by the amount of users that you have uh, in your application. And you should try to avoid loading too much data into memory. What you can do instead is to set up a separate database and it doesn't have to be a separate uh, SQL server. It could be uh, files on your drive on the machine's drive that are accessed in a different way than just loading all of that uh, into memory. Uh, you can uh, check out, uh, uh, search online for Christian Igra's uh, uh, talk about different uh, uh, possible ways of reading data. 
and um, even Uber is uh, having a separate uh, package that uh, basically reads a lot of uh, files, uh, terabytes of data that you can search. This is just files. But when you have an external database, uh, that database contains this one gigabyte, and you just uh, execute a filter a query and you get the result. And here you have two gains. First one is, uh, of course, the fact that you don't have to load the data into memory. But the second one also is the fact that sometimes such filtering is even faster because the database is specially indexed to allow you to make the queries very fast. So just to recap, when you have a successful Shiny application, uh, most likely from the start, because it is a prototype, it is going to look like this. There is a server, there is UI, a lot of communication through, through the WebSockets, and the server is doing a lot of computations uh, by, by themselves. Um, the first thing to do, try to leverage JavaScript, try to move some computations to the browser. The second part, use external server. You can use Plumber API uh, to create a separate server that is going to uh, do the computations for you, and then just ping the main server uh, when the computations is, uh, are done. Um, you can use the database, which is the simplest uh, way of uh, already uh, giving you a lot of edge. And then you can just scale horizontally by adding the servers uh, with your IT team. Now, the other way to think about it is you don't want your application to be a slow chess player. You want your application to be the Forrest Gump of uh, table tennis. You want it to just take the ball and give it back right away. When the, when the application, when the uh, front end is asking for something, you just respond very quickly, hey, yeah, okay, I'm going to do this. And if front end knows that something is triggered, then uh, you just uh, delegate your job uh, somewhere else. And once the job is done, you, you let front end know that uh, something has changed. Uh, this is similar to um, the, the comparison that I have in my head is that you don't want, for example, your mother to come into your room and tell you, hey, now you have to do uh, your homework and I'm going to stand here and wait until you're finished. Um, you want uh, just to say, hey, do the homework and uh, I will be back uh, or let me know when you're finished. Uh, so this is the kind of uh, way you want to structure your Shiny application. Now, uh, to sum it up, I would like to tell you also how to do this. Uh, there is uh, plenty of resources that, uh, that you can reach. Uh, you will, we will share the slides with you so we can click through those links and uh, see different articles. Uh, there is a separate uh, section for leveraging front end. There is a very nice book about JavaScript for R. And there is um, a section for extracting computations, the Shiny Worker package, Shiny Promises package, uh, Plumber API. Uh, Great, uh, great resources that you can just uh, jump into and start working with. Uh, for using a database, I recommend using the uh, reading the main article from our studio that actually goes through every step that you need to, to have the database uh, in your application. And to scale vertically and horizontally, um, there is a very nice uh, page uh, about scaling and performance, uh, performance tuning in our Studio Connect uh, that uh, gives you an overview of all of the configuration options uh, especially how many users you use for the process. And uh, there is a separate doc about high availability, how to scale your application uh, horizontally, how to add additional servers. As I said, this is like really simple. Uh, don't worry about it, just try it. Uh, you can even log into AWS or Google Cloud, set up three virtual machines, install RStudio Connect and see how easy it is to configure. That is all from me. Uh, thank you very much. Hope this is useful and uh, I'm looking forward for the next talk uh, by Mark and Philip.